Hey, what's up YouTube? So, it's been brought to my attention, after reading quite a few comments from my 100k special video, that a sizeable portion of you would like to see a return of the original 150 series. If some of you guys don't know, once upon a time I embarked on a journey to make all original 150 Pokemon in 8-bit form. The first time that I attempted this I got pretty far, I got over a third of the way there. I think I made it to Graveler, around the 60 mark. However, those videos no longer exist. On the most current iteration, I only made it to 20, I made it to Raticate. The reason that I let the series drop off was, at the time that I was doing it, I just wasn't feeling the love from you guys for the series. Not that many people seemed interested, it seemed that I could use my time more wisely on other things such as statues and pixel art and the like. However, circumstances seem to have changed. I'm willing to listen, I'm willing to give it another go. So, where I cut it off last time, at Raticate number 20, I'm going to be picking up exactly from where I finished off, so this video will be of Spiro. I'm not only going to release this video and if it gets a bad reception, cut it off again. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm willing to give it a few videos to see how you guys respond to it. I also won't let these videos interfere with my normal uploading schedule. So don't worry, I won't be uploading these in place of anything like houses or statues or other pixel art. These are going to be a little side project. As I've said in my 100k special video, quite a few of you probably didn't watch it, I like to try and upload at least once every other day, so these Pokemon will either be uploaded with that video or in between. And that is pretty much all I wanted to say, and just to reiterate something important, I'm not going to be dropping the series off again just from the reception of this video. I'm willing to give it more of a chance than that, maybe three, four, maybe even five videos. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, you guys will like them, and they won't be a burden on me to make, and the series will just continue until I hit that 150 mark, but, you know, it's up to you guys, to be honest. So, with all of that being said, let's get started. So if you want to make it, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need sandstone, black wool, white, pink, magenta, brown, and finally, orange wool. They're the only colours that you're going to be needing. Once you've got those, and once you've figured out where you want to make it, I'm going to be making it right here. You want to want to start out with this little colour combination coming up directly from the floor. You want to want to do one black, one white, one black. Simple as that. Then, to the left of the row of three that you've made, you're just going to want to do a row of three black wool directly to the left of it. Like that. Once you've done that, we can get cracking with this outline. So, next order of business. You're going to want to, from the top block of the row of three that you should have just made with the black, you're going to want to extend that out to the left by three with your black wall. So one, two, three. You're then going to want to go up one, left one. You're then going to want to do an up left diagonal, left two. You're then going to want to do an up left diagonal, up one. Then an up right diagonal, up one, right two. Then, a bottom right diagonal, right one, up one, up right diagonal. Let me just show you what that should look like since we're about to backtrack on ourselves. So, that is what you're going to want to have. Quite a few twists and turns in there, so that's why I'm showing you this also. We are about to, as I said, backtrack on ourselves. So, pause that if necessary. Make sure you've got that right. Once you've done that, you are to want to come back to this little J shape that we have here. And underneath this block right here, you're just going to want to go down two with your black, so one, two. You're then just going to want to go left by three from that bottom block, so one, two, three, to give you something which should look like that. And you may not know it yet, but that is Sparrow's beak. So, pause that if necessary, make sure you've got that right. Once you've done that, we can get going with the rest of the outline. So, you're going to want to come back to here. You guys can see where I am, I can't really explain it. And you're just going to want to, from the left block right here, on top of here, you're just going to want to go up by two. So one, two. Then do an upright diagonal. Go up one. Then an upright diagonal again. Right one. Then two. Going down. One, two. Then extend out this middle block to the right by one. Then do two upright diagonals. One and two, then go to the right one, then down two, one, two, 
Then right by two. One, two. Almost said the wrong thing there. But anyway, let me show you what that should look like since. Again, quite a few twists and turns. Spiro is actually surprisingly complex, especially considering the size. So that is what you want to have for that little section that we should have just made. Pause that if necessary. Now we're going to be starting from the other side just because I think it will be a little bit easier. Make sure everything matches up and we've got a pretty weird shape to make if we continue down this line. So let me just show you. This is everything so far. Make sure you've done that. Once you have, you're going to want to come back to here. And to the right of this white block, you're just going to want to place a black block. Then on top of the black, you're just going to want to place an orange. On top of the orange, place a black. Then, you're going to want to do an up left diagonal from the black. Go up by two, one, two, and then left by one. Then, coming back to the row where you went up by two, you're going to want to do an upright diagonal. Then, you're going to want to place one on top of that diagonal, and you're just going to want to, from the one you placed on top, go left one and right one to give you a little bit of a T shape. So you're going to want to have something which should look like that. Pause that if necessary. Then, starting from on top of the left portion of the T, you're just going to want to go up one, and then right by four. So, one, two, three, four. To give you that sort of shape. Then, you're going to want to, starting from here, so the second block coming in from the left, you're just going to want to place a block, and then again, go right by four. So, one, two, three, four. Then, you're just going to want to, once you've made this shape, I always find it hard to explain these shapes. I feel as though it's kind of a, just do it and, uh, do it and show you part of the tutorial. But anyway, you want to have a shape which should look like that. Once you've done that, you're just going to want to place one block on top here, so that that connects diagonally to the previous portion of the pixel art. And you're also going to want to do two blocks coming up from here, so, like so. Then, from the top block that you should have just placed, going up by two, you're going to want to do an upright diagonal. Go up by one. Then an upright diagonal. Go right one. Down two. One, two. Then, you're going to want to do a bottom left diagonal, and go down one. And you should find that that connects all together nicely with what we've just done. Then, you're going to want to do this. And I notice it's getting a little dark, but I want to do this before we before we cut out. So you just want to, from this point here, hopefully you guys can see easy enough where I am, you want to do a bottom right diagonal. Then you want to proceed to do four upright diagonals. So from this block, one, two, three, and four. You then want to go up by two from that fourth diagonal, one, two, and then left by one to give you a shape which should look a little bit like that. And those are just Sparrow's tail feathers. I wanted to get those done um, just because that is the last difficult, air quotes here, difficult part. I'll show you this again in the daytime, so I'll be back in a sec. So that is what you want to have so far for the tail end of Sparrow. Pause that if necessary. Once you've done that, we can do the little of what's left of the outline. So you're going to want to come back to where we first started, right here. And from the right of this block of orange and the black that's on top of it, you're just going to want to do two black wool. Then, from the top block of black that you should have just placed, you're going to want to go right by one. Then, you're going to want to do an upright diagonal. Then, right one. Up one. Right one. Up one. Right one. And finally, up two. To give you something which should look a little bit like that, just to show you how that connects together. Pause that if necessary. Once you've done that, I'm just going to pan out and show you the whole outline, because once you have done that, give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back, because you have done the entire outline of Sparrow, aka the hard part. All we have to do now is colour it in. And I will point out, look at some of the shapes involved in the outline. It's a pretty complicated pixel art considering the size. Hard to explain at the very least, maybe not complicated, but difficult to explain. Anyway, as I said, and I'm just going to repeat this, 
Pause that if necessary, make sure you've got that right because the next part of this is just going to be me colouring this in. Alright, so this is how the colouring in process is going to go and as a matter of fact I'm going to explain this whilst I do some colouring in. So, I'm going to be adding in all of one colour at a time. In this case, the pink. Once I've finished adding in all of the colour, I'm going to zoom out and show you where that goes. I'm not going to try and explain what I'm doing with any colour, I'm just going to be doing this. And as you can see, considering the fact that that is all of the pink that exists in Sparrow, it should be quite easy for you to just look at mine and apply it to yours. So, that's how this is going to work, and the next colour, as a result of this, is going to be easier to add in. And so on and so forth. So, pause that if necessary, that is all of the pink that's in Sparrow. Once you've done that, you're going to add magenta, and magenta is very simple. It's just this little section underneath the right section of pink. So, for his wing, he has a very colourful wing. That's all of the magenta that exists in Sparrow. Pause that if necessary. Once you've done that, we're doing two colours. So, Sparrow has some sandstone down here that is his chest, and he also has a little bit of white for his eyes. So, you're just going to want to add that sandstone there, and that white there. Should be fairly simple for you, so... Pause that if necessary. Once you've done that, we're going to be adding in the orange, that is all of the sandstone and the white that exists in Sparrow. The orange, admittedly, is a little bit more difficult, although it shouldn't particularly challenge you, since... Most of it exists next to an outline, and Sparrow is actually a perfect example of this, since outlines are everywhere, there's quite a lot of black in this, that... Um, if it's just sitting next to the outline, it should be quite easy to just to just copy it. So, just to show you, this may be a bit more difficult to view, but I think that that's a quite a nice angle. There you go. That is all of the orange that exists in Sparrow. It's really not too much. Difficult part would be that left section, but you guys shouldn't have any trouble with that. Once you've added all of the orange. Pause that if necessary, I'm going to say it again. Once you've added all of the orange, we only have one more colour, which is brown. And brown goes everywhere else, so there's no need to... No need to be conservative with the brown. Everywhere that isn't filled in just needs to be occupied with brown wool. So, once you've done that, just to show you where the brown wool goes, once you've done that, as you can see, you'll be left with something which should look a little bit like that. And that's how your Sparrow should look, so let me take off the UI and show you what it looks like all pulled together. That's a pretty nice Sparrow if you ask me, so... I don't think there's anything more to say, I hope the colouring in process was easy enough to follow. That's the, that's the most user-friendly way that I've ever found of explaining how to colour stuff in. It really is. I've went for a few, and I think that this is probably the easiest way. Other than literally going through block by block, like, you know, explaining it as I would the outline. But that, that's insane. I'm, I'm not doing that, so... That is Sparrow. I hope you found this easy enough to follow, I hope you enjoyed it. As I said at the beginning of the video, this if this doesn't get a very good reception, it won't be the last. I'm willing to I'm willing to try a few. So thanks for watching and see ya. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, maybe you should think about subscribing. I have plenty more stuff like this on my channel. I have tutorials ranging from YouTube statues, skin statues, houses, pixel art, the list goes on. Thanks for watching.